All right, I'm trying to take this overflow uh, cap assembly off the radiator cap. I broke one bolt, one was already broke. Got three more to go. I just loosened this one. Now to try the others. They're flat heads, which makes them a pain especially when they strip out on top. Shoot. So I took this off because I wanted to make sure it wasn't clogged. So what happens is if it gets too hot or there's too much coolant in here, this overflow will open, releasing the extra coolant out this tube. And it should have a tube that runs straight down below that's missing here. But regardless, if this gets plugged up, it can pr pressure on the coolant system causing issues. Um, I've heard of pretty bad problems happening because of it. So I wanted to take it off and just clean this valve up so essentially if you look at it if it gets too much pressure in there it lifts up allowing fluid to go through this disc up and over down into that hole and that hole goes straight down and reaches this tube so when this comes up the fluid comes up and over let's see how was it here all right like that Yep, that's how it works. It goes up and over, down into that tube. That's why this cap has this lid that's angled just like that, so it can go over into that hole. As you can see, this cap has had a repair done before. Somebody soldered right over the, a hole that was in it. Well, still nothing. Oh, sweet. Wasn't expecting it to come out like that. Sometimes when I get to this point using a four fluted tap, I'll go to a two fluted tap and I can usually get a little bit more of the very end of it out because there's more room in a two-fluted tap 
to move some of the bigger uh, chunks that might be there at the bottom. Now, just to check that this bypass hole, which goes from here on out to this hole, is open, we're gonna put air to it and see if we can feel air coming out here. Yep, yep it's wide open. Good deal. So I got this all cleaned up. The gasket that goes right here between is probably still fine. It's in pretty good shape. But the one that was below on this surface just kind of crumbled. And so my plan is to just make two new ones. Um, they should be simple enough and I might as well do it. Well, fail. That's all right. Boom shakalaka. Little copper anti-seize for these bolts. Awesome. Well, now I've got confidence that this overflow is in working condition and is not going to be all backed up and cause any other issues on the motor so that is great now what we're going to do is we're going to actually drain all the coolant which is only water at the moment out of the system so that we can put antifreeze in it's getting cold and last thing in the world i need is to leave water in it and get it frozen and have it cause some massive problem to the engine so we're going to fix that right now so the coolant drains out right here and there's a threaded fitting. So I'm gonna screw in this. This is an adapter to allow me to hook up a hose to it. And it doesn't have to be crazy tight. And then we're gonna hook up a hose to it and it'll be easier to drain. Yummy. Now there's a block drain right in here. Right above my finger is the block drain. I already drained the coolant, which was basically just water. I'm gonna fill it back up with water. We're gonna turn it on, let it run for a little bit, and then we'll empty it out again. Probably too much, but oh well. It'll be fine. Well, I was trying to start the pony motor again, and I heard a, a pop 
down in there somewhere and then I got a big puff of white smoke out of the pony motor exhaust pipe man I'm pissed at least frustrated at myself not sure what happened but now it won't start at all so gosh well I'll figure it out for now we got the coolant warm enough to drain so we're gonna we're gonna do that We've got the hose basically just flushing it out and it was looking real murky now we got it down to looking clear both of the coolant plugs are going in with copper anti-seize this time so i checked the pony motors oil last night and it basically had some metal some metallic shavings in it it wasn't there weren't big chunks very fine right now it looks like the oil is now mostly mixed with gas so i'm gonna have to drain that and replace the oil i don't know what exactly happened i really hope i didn't grenade the pony motor so <laughs> needless to say it's demoralizing you get to the point where you're starting to get progress and then something sets you back I look at it like this machine is 64 years old it hasn't been started in 20 plus years and from the knowledge that I have and what people have told me it hasn't been operated in 35 years so I haven't had any real major setbacks in this project and this may be the first one that really sets me back because I knew that it didn't hold water, I knew that it didn't hold hydraulic fluid, and I knew that it didn't turn. I, I knew those problems, and so I've fixed two of the three of those, and I'm working on the third one, but the pony motor issue is not something I knew, and so obviously it's not fun having to figure out new problems and issues, but I mean that goes along right with it. So for right now, I'm going to avoid putting new coolant into the motor i'm just going to leave it empty so that i can work on diagnosing the pony motor issues and not have to worry about losing the antifreeze or the water and as of right now it's empty so i'm not worried about water freezing inside of the engine block causing issues like i would be if i had left the water in there and so for now that's what i'm thinking definitely not fun with the pony motor issue and i'm not looking forward to having to fix that or what that's gonna entail but as with everything you just got to keep going through it just got to keep moving and so today I'm gonna work on there's a hydraulic hose down here below this hose here it's the only one in the belly and it basically is the return line from the pump it is a monster I have talked to Cat. I took the part number in. Cat does not make it. They cannot get it. And I've the other one that I have, I'll show it to you here shortly. It has a big gash right here in the middle of it. And then there's a couple other bad spots. This particular one is weeping oil here at this this little nick, that ding. So I'm I'm gonna do something about it. And the reason I want to do something about it is right now it's right here. I can get to it. It's right in front of my face. The second I put this track roller frame on right here and the belly pan on, it's going to be buried. It's going to be so much more work to deal with it then than it will be right now. So while I'm here and while I've got it out, um, I've come up with a solution with the help of uh, an awesome guy at the Parker store. And so we're going to work on that right now. I'm going to drain all the hydraulic fluid out of the machine and unbolt this hose and I'll show you the workaround that we've uh, we've come up with
and you get some more buckets. Now that I got this hose out, you can kind of see a spot right there. See that? That is a rub that's been rubbing for years because you see that rub right there into the side of that housing. It's basically rubbed the imprint of that hose right into it. Now that wasn't even really the reason that I was gonna replace this. The bigger reason was right here. See that big gash? I don't think it even all the way went went all the way through, but my thinking was that I replace this before it goes bad so that I don't have to rip everything out underneath to get to it. This is the only flexible hose in the belly. Every single other hose for everything else hydraulic is accessible above the machine and so it'll be much easier to get to those hoses this one would be a nightmare especially because it looks like we've got some damage in a few places so since you can't buy this hose we've got a workaround and i'll show you that here, here shortly all right so here is the extra hose that I have and as you can see there's a pretty big gash all the way you know from right about there where you can see the metal banding in there all the way across and it gets less and less deep but down here is the worst this part 6h 1100 is no longer available by cat nor do they have a replacement or anything so and also these two tabbed bolt flanges for hydraulics are also antiquated and no longer used. So what am I gonna do? Both these hoses have problems. This one upon further inspection has a big gash right here. It's got the gash that I saw. It's got the wear here right along the, the collar. The thing, the way these work, is essentially there's a, a collar that sl slides down into the hose and then this outer ring is crimped onto it and so because of that the plan i'm gonna use this one this one's the worst of the two if i had to keep an extra i'm gonna keep the one that was on the machine so this one i'm gonna slice this crimped collar off we're gonna cut the hose out and we're gonna reuse these flanges and the inner piece that slides into the hydraulic hose. actually supposed to 
slide down. I thought that this collar here needed to come off, and so I tried cutting into it, but I don't think it does. I think it stays on there, and so I'm going to clean up this edge so that it's nice and smooth and not rough, and then we're going to get this whole thing, all the dirt cleaned out of it, um, and get it all ready to use. So we're going to start on the 2x72, do some uh, hogging away on this metal, make it look nicer, clean it up. Safety first, I love these Link Isotunes over the ear headphones. They are absolutely awesome and I can listen to my music without it affecting video. So check them out. All cleaned up. New holes will go right here. And it'll bolt up the same way as it did. Gas go ring will go right there. So the plan is we've got some new hose, two and a half inch, that will essentially slip over this collar, or this uh, little sleeve will slip into it. And then what we'll do is we're going to use these heavy-duty uh, hose clamps, which will clamp over the hose, clamping it down onto this inner sleeve that will go in. And so because of the fact that this part's not available, it can't even be made because of the two-flange uh, bolt pattern, this is a workaround that I had to figure out with the, the guys at the Parker store. And because this is a non-pressured return line, like it's not a high pressure line, it's going to be totally fine. It will not have problems and, you know, you know we're not going to worry about leaking really. As long as we get installed right and we get these torqued down to the right torque specs and then these made it up with the O-rings that go right in here, these will seal just like they did before. The way they cut this hose, they basically use this like guillotine thing or this, it puts a bunch of pressure down onto the hose and it kind of oblongs it. So I'm going to slice off about a half an inch here with the baby bandsaw to uh, give myself a nice round section to uh, attempt to slide the, the sleeve into. I'm just going to add a little lube, a little oil here. Try and help make it go in easier. Almost. Half inch. There we go. That was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. The hose measures. About. 16 and a half inches, 17 inches maybe. So this whole assembly is 22 and one quarter inches. All 
All right, right about there. All right, we got it made. New O-rings, both seals. So it's gonna go like that. But what we still have to do is we still have to clamp this hose to this fitting. So we're gonna be using these. So essentially they have these like ribs in them that clamp down onto the hose and tighten it up. And so based on where I can put this one. This one's gonna have to go like right here. And then this one, right behind it is the oil fill, or the oil dipstick for the diesel motor. And so this one's not gonna be able to get too far or all the way up, but the this uh, fitting comes out to about right here. And so we can get almost the full bracket onto that fitting. And because this is a low pressure hose, I'm not at all concerned about it being a big issue as long as we get this clamped down and tight. And then what my plan is, because we still have the, the, the belly pan to go on, is to cut off the extra piece of uh, the bolt that's sticking out so that it's basically out of the way and it's not gonna come in contact with that belly pan. So hopefully we've got enough angle here to get that belly pan in there. Guess we'll find out. So that's the plan and then I'll bolt these back on and onto the flanges here on both sides. All right, to replace the belt, we have to remove a couple lock tabs and then loosen the tensioner, which is right in this area. Oh, what do you know? Another loose bolt. So this little locking tab basically keeps this tensioner from unscrewing that way. So I think there's two of them. Yep. Now, that looks broken. Oh, it is. Oh, interesting.
Man, this would have been easier <laughs> if I had done it when I had the radiator off. Oh well. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. I don't live like that. Alright, after a bunch of trying to get this loose, I decided to take the whole mechanism apart. Gotcha. I'm having trouble getting the belt tensioner assembly off the machine. And so I went and I grabbed the extra one that I have. This is essentially the full water pump assembly. And basically, let's see if I can show you here. The belt spins, rides right in here, and it turns these fins inside here, and that pumps the coolant through the system. And so this disc also looks much better than the ones on the machine. This one's not broken. The one on the machine actually has one of these tabs in there broken off and so I'm gonna have to replace it anyway so for now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this apart and figure out how it comes apart and then I'll go back to the machine and I can go from there All right, that's what I thought. This is a keyed cap. You can see the keyway right there above my finger. So it doesn't spin off, it pulls off. Alright, so unfortunately, I think what I'm going to have to do, to, to get this off, I need a puller. And it's pretty simple to do once I have, I'm able to get a puller on it. So, the plan is to take off the water pump. So essentially it's this piece, there's seven or eight bolts, and then this hose here. I was really trying to avoid that, because if I pull it off I'm probably gonna have to end up making another gasket for it and I was trying to avoid having to do that but this will be the safest way without really messing up the radiator and it's pretty simple to get to it's not too difficult not to mention right now I've got no coolant in it at all so there won't be any big mess when I pull it off so and I guess one more advantage is we'll get a peek in there and I haven't quite seen that far into the this part of the engine yet, so. All right, the other thing that has to happen is to get this belt here off, I've gotta take off this yoke for the hydraulic pump. So I gotta loosen these four bolts here, and then there's four bolts on this circle plate that essentially have to come off, and then I can get it off. I've already got the four bolts on the circle plate off. Put these two back in because I have to break these nuts loose or these bolts loose before I can get any more. So.
Now the belt should fit right through there. Alright, here's the removed water pump. And essentially, this is the belt where the belt rides. And it's a big threaded screw that as you thread it further in, the belt rides higher and higher and higher, tensioning it tighter and tighter. And so what you're supposed to do is basically unscrew this mechanism, releasing the tension, allowing you to get enough slack to lift the belt over and off well I couldn't do that because it was all locked up not to mention it's broken right here and I'll show that to you once we get this off um, here's the inside of the pump a little bit of rust but I mean honestly when anything that's got water in it's gonna have that as an issue I am gonna have to make a new gasket basically it cracked right here and you know I probably ruined it and just taking it off um, but not a bad problem because at the end of the day now I know it'll be a, a good gasket that I know is in there and installed. So, And then once we get it figured out and take this apart, we're going to look at this one and the extra one and decide which one's better and use the better of the two. So there's the cap. Essentially it gets pressed on a keyed shaft. down to a shoulder and then it rides in there and then this tensioning mechanism for the belt should lift straight out. So these are the two tensioning mechanisms I have for the belts. Essentially when it's installed it looks something like this. It's got these two tabs that lock into, it should, it should be locked into one of these, one of these four grooves. and. And this one is broken. So right at this area, there's a gap in the metal, a space. You can see right there that allows this almost like a, a little bit of spring tension. Well, this side is broken. And so the piece, actually right here, this piece should sit something like that and then there should be another little piece and it looks like you can just see where somebody took a screwdriver and trying to drive it and punched it and cracked it so when it was on the machine it was something like just barely like that when I found it and I think I ended up breaking it off the rest of the way um, so that's too bad unfortunate but at the end of the day it's a wonderful thing that I have too Well, that definitely was broken before I touched it. So I don't want any of this rusty chunks coming off in the coolant, even though it would probably be fine because it just settled at the bottom, but anything you can do to kind of clean something up before it goes back on always pays back dividends and less maintenance or just have, not having to worry about something later on in its life. 
All right, here are the two water pumps. This is the one that came off the machine. And all in all, it's in very, very good shape. Um, only thing, there's two things about it. Right here, this little piece of the casting broke off. Now, this is not actually an important piece because all it does is retain a pin for installing it. So it's not like it's actually structural or anything. And so all the bolt holes that actually hold it on are still intact. And basically that hole probably on the machine still, I'd have to go look, has a pin just like this one, but it's still on the machine. And normally they would stay in the machine. Clearly this one got stuck in uh, the pump here. If you look at this other one here, that's been brazed back on. And so clearly somebody else had the same issue on this pump that they did on the other one as far as that tab breaking off. That does not make my decision on which pump to choose. Yeah, this one is better because it's intact, but honestly, I wouldn't even really worry about that. One thing I would worry about is this seal right here. And as you can see right there, this is the spring that should be underneath a rubber uh, seal there. And it's kind of sticking through. And the, the rubber seal's there still, but it is broken on this pump here. All in all, the bearings feel great in both pumps. The, they both turn perfectly. Other than that tab broken there and this seal, there's nothing wrong with this pump at all. And so I'm not overly concerned about putting this one back on the machine, but the seal on this one is perfectly intact all the way around and is in much, much better shape. All in all, I've got this better pump with the better seal, the brazed on fix here. You know, at the end of the day, the other pump is perfectly fine. All I'd need to do is replace that seal since I've got it apart. Honestly, it would probably work for a long, long time without having to do a single thing to it. But I'm at the point now where it's already off. So I decided to go with this extra pump. I'll make a new gasket for around here. I, I took the wire wheel to this got all the big chunks and whatnot out of there. It, it spins beautifully. I blew out the whole pump and the tube, made sure there was nothing stuck in there from just sitting. Cleaned it up to the best of my ability for the moment. The only thing that's wrong with this one is right here, there's a broken grease zerk. And so I'm gonna pull the grease zerks off, check them, clean them, and then put probably new grease zerks in both. Um, that'll take two seconds. And then we'll start reassembling, putting this thing back together. Well, I'll go ahead and get the other parts cleaned up for it. We are going to go with the extra belt tensioner, or uh, the belt adjustment, basically the tensioner.
Yeah. I've almost never had a use for these vice grips. <laughs> but they sure came in handy this time. This is a thread file. It's meant to clean up marred up threads. And so we're going to use it here on this screw or nut or whatever it's called. Boom shakalaka. All right, clean these threads up. Cover them in uh, copper anti-seize. Old belt, new belt.
All right, these little lock, lock tabs fit right in here. And then the bolts that hold them. I think the longer ones go in this. And the bolts go in. The belt is in. The water pump is in. Gasket installed. Fan back on. U-joint below is also now back installed. Goodness gracious, that was a lot more work than just changing a belt. But that's how it is with Old Red. Probably hasn't seen this kind of maintenance in four decades. So he fights me on every bit, but I win every time. Hope you guys have enjoyed. More to come. Have a great day.